Hi, everyone. We are so excited to have Dr. Anna Lanham here with us today. After seven years of professional chiropractic experience in Dallas, Texas, Dr. Anna moved to Midway, Utah with her husband, Nathan, and her daughter, Parker. Dr. Anna's journey as an athlete led her to discover the world of chiropractic, sparking a deep fascination with the potential of the human body. Along with her doctorate in chiropractic, she's a certified dry needling practitioner and perinatal chiropractor. Dr. Anna is continuously motivated by learning and educates her patients to be better equipped for a thriving and adaptive life. Outside of the office, you can find her doing anything active outdoors with her friends and family. We are so excited to learn about the world of chiropractic and pregnancy and infants. So thanks for joining us tonight. Yes, thanks for having me. Um, I love what the Hive is doing, the fact that y'all have brought this amount of women and families together, um, and then also offer free resources and community and friendship and play dates and all of the above. Um, it's really special to have in the community. So I'm okay. excited to be a part of it. Yes, we are too. Um, I'll let you take it away. All righty. So today we are going to kind of keep it general um, with chiropractic and adaptability. So this is what we focus on a lot in our office is, um, increasing adaptability so that we can have an optimal life. So, um, specifically today, we are going to be exploring the role of chiropractic care, um, in promoting adaptability for well-being of both mom throughout pregnancy, um, and baby will kind of stick to that first six months, months of life, um, for the sake of today's talk. So let's see. There we go. Um, Kayla mentioned a little bit, I don't always love starting out with a bio, but I am new to the area. Um, so I figured I would introduce myself. So I am Anna, I'm a, a perinatal chiropractor. Um, I have a little girl, she is three and a half now, and husband, we moved out here about two years ago from Dallas, Texas. Um, so I am Webster certified uh, that you probably don't know what that means, but it is the gold standard of prenatal chiropractic through the International Chiropractic Pediatric Association. Um, and I also focus a lot on sports. I started out in sports, so I do some dry needling, some ozone, some PRP. Um, I can get really excited about that too, but today we're focused on perinatal stuff in those babies and um, I love it all, and I'm excited to talk about it. So like most of you in the area, I am a movement enthusiast. Um, love being outdoors, love to hike, love to ski, um, love to play outside, and I genuinely think movement is life, um, and even deeper than that, our quality movement can really result in our quality of life. So we all know that feeling more, when we do feel more comfortable in our bodies, um, and more capable in our bodies, we are empowered to be better in almost every area of life, right? So our bodies, they're the home of our person, um, our soul, spirit, whatever we, we want to call it. So when we do feel comfortable in that, when we can trust our bodies, we're more certain in our decision making, we feel more empowered um, and tend to believe more in ourselves. So that's something we want to really focus on is being comfortable and capable and feeling good in our bodies and moving well um, so that we see that in other areas of our life, right? As a wife, as a mom, as a friend, as a daughter. Um, so it really, really bleeds into each part of our life. So which brings me to the next point, right? That's all of those good things um, when we have good movement. Uh, we see optimal life. And when we don't, we're stuck, right? Lack of movement is stuckness. And as you can see this photo of this woman, um, of course she looks uncomfortable, right? Of course she probably has neck pain and back pain um, and those shoulder blades probably feel tense. She may even have some headaches. Um, all of those things we hear about with chiropractic all the time, right? Back and neck pain. What I want to focus on today is when we are stuck, not only are we in pain and uncomfortable, but our systems are very distracted. Um, our nervous systems are very distracted. So if someone were to come in and ask her a question right now, yes, she may be able to answer it, but the overarching theme in her mind is that she's stuck in this position. 
Um, that noise in her head can be really distracting um, and can make anything else you're doing not be as great as it could if she was standing upright and comfortable in her own body, right? So we're going to kind of look into that deeper. What causes us to be stuck? Lack of movement causes us to be stuck, right? But the biggest thing is stress. Any sort of stressful environment is going to cause our bodies to lock up. When those bodies are locked up, it causes a lot of noise in our system that's distracting um, and also zaps a lot of our energy to be able to work efficiently um, in other areas. So I like to break up stress in three different forms. Um, so we've got our physical stressors, which are postural injuries. We have our chemical stressors, which are environment, nutrition, and hormones. Um, and then we have our emotional stressors, right? Family, finances, relational trauma. Um, all of these things we can't necessarily get rid of, right? Especially in this day and age and in this adult life, we're going to have stress. We can limit it as much as we can, but it's kind of the inevitable. So even though we can't get rid of them, our job is to increase adaptability so that we can adapt to them better, right? Even though there's stress, we can deal with it. We can cope with it and we can bounce back. And we want to be adaptable. We want to be able to deal with stresses and then be able to rest um, accordingly. So that is what can cause us to be stuck and stressed out. Um, the term I keep using, adaptability, so I've just laid out a couple of definitions for adaptability, right? One is the quality of being able to adjust to new conditions um, and two, the capacity to be modified for a new use or purpose. And when I was reading these definitions, I just can see motherhood and newborns, right? Every day throughout our pregnancy, we are adjusting to new conditions in our body newborns when they come out and even in utero they're adjusting to new conditions so we need to be adaptable so that we can adjust accordingly um, and have that optimal growth and optimal pregnancy and labor and delivery and development and all of the above okay and then what i love about this second definition um, a new use or purpose i mean that's the essence of motherhood is stepping into a new use or purpose in our life um, to be able to do that in a beautiful an effortless way um, is incredible when we get to experience it. All right. So how can chiropractic help with adaptability? Okay. So let's get practical here. I do want to break up two different areas that I look at for chiropractic and how we kind of explain it in the office when it comes to being more adaptable. Um, so we have our nervous system, right? Our nervous system, think about, is it's our brain and it's our, our brainstem and our spinal cord and all the nerves that come from it. And I like to think about it as this communication highway system for the brain to communicate with the body and body to communicate with the brain. When the communication is clear, right, unless there's a lack of matter or certain, you know, discrepancies in our system if the communications well most of the time we're able to function and adapt well okay so what happens is when we get stressed and our bodies get tense we get what we call as chiropractors subluxations or misalignments these stressful tense misalignments in and around the spine can cause interference in that nervous system so it's kind of like having a fuzzy phone line. So as the brain is trying to communicate with the body and the body with the brain, they're getting one out of every 10 words, right? It's a really fuzzy phone line. It's really hard to interpret and we don't have as much of um, as optimal of functioning in whatever system it may be, whether it's digestive or um, or neurological or biomechanical, right? It kind of is communication for the entirety of the body. Um, so when there's not good communication, there's not great adaptability. When there is good communication, we're able to adapt. Okay. Um, and then the other section we kind of talk about is biomechanics. 
So restoring those proper physical balance between all the joints, the muscles and ligaments, they help us move better. They help us adapt better throughout life. They help us um, prevent, prevent injuries, right? And be more comfortable in our bodies and therefore more confident and competent um, throughout other areas of our life. So um, again, just reiterating that quality of movement, um, yielding just a really quality in life. Uh, so two stages needing the most ad adaptability, in my opinion, pregnancy and postpartum um, and the newborn. Okay, so that's what we're going to hop into today and then how chiropractic can help you throughout those life stages. So with prenatal chiropractic, um, practically speaking, we focus on two things, okay? So there is the Webster technique, which I mentioned a little bit about before. Um, it's the gold standard for certification in prenatal chiropractic. Um, what the Webster technique focuses on is reintegrating and instilling proper biomechanics and movement within the pelvis. Okay. So we have our pelvis. That's like a bowl, right? It's three bones. It's the sacrum and it's your two iliums and everything needs to move separately from one another, right? Especially when preparing for birth, everything's going to open up and get nice openness for that baby to come through that birth canal. Um, so with that said, we have those three bones, but they're also has, we also have the uterus, right? That's suspended within that pelvic bowl, kind of like a hammock. And it's attached to be a ligaments to this pelvic bowl. So when there is constraint or tension in those ligaments or tendons, um, it kind of pulls tension. So if you can imagine the rope of a hammock kind of pulling up or wound up, it puts a lot of constraint in this area. So what's gonna happen? right? We're going to go to the part that's more comfortable and more cozy. And if it winds up even more and this cozy part gets smaller and smaller, we're just going to ball up in this area. Um, so that's what we're focus focusing on with Webster technique. We want everything to be nice and loose. We want the round ligaments, the broad ligaments, the sacral ligaments, um, and all the biomechanics within the pelvis to be biomechanically sound, moving well, so that one, you can be more comfortable, and two, it really optimizes labor and delivery. Um, two, we focus on full spine. So some prenatal chiropractors, they'll just stay within the pelvis, um, but talking about the nervous system, we're very nervous system based in our practice, um, getting rid of the noise and the tension in the upper neck in that mid back so that your body and brain can communicate with one another. I mean, you're developing a human baby, right? And your nervous system is in charge of that. Your nervous system is that baby's nervous system, right? So we want that to be nice and clear for communication, take the stress off of that system. So baby is able to de-stress and focus on growing and adapting as well. All righty. Okay. There's my next slide on Webster technique. So I kind of already mentioned all of this getting in the weeds, but you can see the pelvis. We're just trying to balance that out. Um, and again, that's the just the gold standard certification for prenatal chiropractic. So if you are in a different area um, or if you need someone closer, we are in Midway. Um, but look up, you can go to ICPA, which is the International Chiropractic Pediatric Association. A mouthful, um, or you can just Google Webster certified chiropractors in my area. Um, on that website, it's going to pull up the certified Webster practitioners in the area so you can find a doctor near you. Okay. All right. Benefits of adjusting during pregnancy. So here's some symptoms. Um, if we want to focus on that, that pregnant, that adjustments during pregnancy really helps. So headache, nausea, neck pain. Um, a lot of this is due to postural changes, right? Everything is forward. We have more weight distribution forward with our bellies growing, oftentimes our chest growing. And then we've got other kids running around like Kayla and I were just speaking about. Um, you're down here all the time, right? Life is just forward. Um, so being able to open up that body, decrease the tension and the stress in the neck, 
um, can really help get rid of the headaches, help with the nausea, um, decrease back and sciatic pain. I mean, this is basic chiropractor stuff, right? So um, with that, it's it's the weight distribution, right? It's pulling tension, putting more compression in your low back. Um, and of course, if you've got more compression in the low back, depending on where it is, you can put pressure on that sciatic nerve. You get the shooting pain down into the glute, um, into the hamstring, and sometimes into the foot as well. Um, another big sign with this, is if you get numbness and tingling in the feet really easily, um, throughout your pregnancy, that's a really good sign to get checked by a chiropractor as well. So with these things, neck pain and back pain, right? They're very common things. A lot of people will just tell you it's just part of being pregnant, but there are things we can do about it. Just because it's common doesn't mean it's normal. I know that's kind of a buzzy phrase now, but it still rings true. Um, there are things we can do. You don't have to be uncomfortable. That's one of the biggest uh, benefits of chiropractic care throughout pregnancy is a more comfortable pregnancy. And when you're more comfortable in your body, right, you're more adaptable, you're more competent, um, you're less irritable with your family. Um, it's just, it makes you the better overall in everything in life. So um, optimal fetal positioning, we kind of talked about this with the Webster technique. So baby is always going to move into the part of the uterus where there's the least amount of constraint. So if there is malposition in the pelvis, if there is tension in the pelvis and the hips and the muscles, um, baby's going to move away from that, right? So maybe baby's up in your rib cage, maybe up in your diaphragm, maybe always on that left side. Um, so chiropractic is not, we're not getting in there and moving the position of the baby, right? We can help you with certain exercises to do it naturally at home, but really it's instilling the proper biomechanics in the pelvis and when you can do that the baby knows what to do it's going to fall into great positioning your body is designed to do this your baby is designed to be in your pelvis your pelvis is never too small to birth the baby that you grow it's just probably not moving properly okay side note if anyone tells you your pelvis is too small to deliver your baby go see a chiropractor get some movement in there so that your pelvis can open up, okay? Create space for that baby to come out. Um, shorter labor labor and delivery times goes back to the same thing. Biomechanics, um, there's a lot of statistics on that. And then of course, healthier mama, healthier baby, right? Most important thing is to decrease stress in mama, decrease that maternal stress um, so that we can have healthier baby in utero. So to wrap this up in a pretty bow with the prenatal topic, Better communication and movement in mom's body is going to increase mom's adaptability, decrease mom's stress, and yield a healthier mom and therefore a healthier baby, which we love to see. Here's a healthy mom and baby in our practice. Sweet little Myra. I'll tell you a little bit about her story. She's in a lot of our photos. She was my, my model for some pictures I just had done. Um, here is... so. This lovely mama, I got to see her through her pregnancy. So th this was actually um, a couple weeks ago, right? She ended up delivering two days after this adjustment. But I, she originally came in because she just was getting this nagging hip pain in her leg. Um, she was in her second trimester. She wanted to be able to ride her bike with her family. And her body wasn't allowing her to do that because it was so uncomfortable. Um, I'll show you. Let me go forward on a picture here. So... Um, she's always been athletic, always had tight hips, right? And the left hip was always tighter than the right hip. And then you get pregnant and then you want to do these things and everything starts pulling towards those discrepancies, which you can kind of see in this photo. So you can see on the left side, this is before her last adjustment, her belly just kind of moving towards it's our right, her left. Um, pulling towards that, um, the left side of her hip, right? And then you see in that image right next to it, um, nice and balanced after her adjustment. So um, she did struggle with some round ligament pain and hip pain. We were able to um, care for her throughout her pregnancy and help her be comfortable. She was able to ride bikes with her family. Um, she, right after this adjustment, went into labor and had a smooth, healthy, easy delivery. Um, I know it doesn't happen for all of us, but with 
um, consistent care, um, it really increases our odds. And she had a beautiful experience with her first baby. So that was fun to see. Um, I'll go back to this picture as well. This is just another example. You can see the bump drop, right? So baby is up pre-adjustment, kind of up into the ribs, and then post-adjustment, um, really dropping into the pelvis which is nice and beautiful belly. Okay, so that kind of covers the prenatal portion. Now we're gonna get into the babies. What about the babies? Boss Baby, it's my three-year-old's, one of my uh, three-year-old's favorite movies right now. Um, okay, I'm just gonna kind of clear up frequently asked questions with these newborns, okay? Because this is how it's often presented to me um, and I wanna be as helpful as possible. So. One, why would a newborn need to be checked by a chiropractor? Okay, what? why would a newborn have anything to stress about? So one is womb positioning. We covered it with all the other stuff. If they are in a certain part of the uterus where there is constraint, um, there's a number of different reasonings for positioning, but they get all curled and cramped up, right? That's going to cause tension and stress in their little bodies. Traumatic birth. Um C-section with a lot of pulling when there's a lot of force on that upper cervical region, you can get a lot of tension and trauma in the upper cervical region. Um, increase adaptability to the new world, right? They're in this dark, cozy womb with their mom um, and they're in this bright new world where there's more noise, um, a lot of love from a lot more people, um, but it's a lot to adapt to, right? Um, movement grows baby's brain. I always love to touch on this. Um, we've heard about primitive reflexes. I won't go down that rabbit hole. Um, but to put it simply, move, our brains are not, newborns' brains are not fully developed. What grows the actual brain is movement. Okay. This is why we have primitive reflexes. Um, why littles have primitive reflexes, because it is an ingrained movement. That movement is going to grow the brain, grow their higher centers of the brain where those can come down and then control and regulate our nervous system, our behavior, how we adapt to life, um, all of our development, right? So when we're stuck in these positions, making sure we've got proper movement in those babies' bodies is so important for their growth and development, Okay. Um, so I do want to touch on these two little things. I know sympathetic dominance is a big buzzword right now. And y'all probably have are aware of these two portions of the nervous system. Um, but it really is pertinent to what I'm about to touch on. So, um, you've, we've got two portions of our nervous system, right? We have our sympathetic, which is our fight, flight, freeze, high stress, and our parasympathetic, which is rest, digest, grow, low stress. Okay. As adults, I feel like sympathetic nervous system gets a really bad rap. Being stuck in it is not good. That's where we get ourselves into trouble, but both serve a purpose. So optimal health is being able to switch between the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system as needed, right? We need to be able to get things done throughout the day. We need to be, a, be able to put our head down and plow through. We need to be able to do hard things. But afterwards, we need to be able to rest and recuperate and refuel and be able to digest, okay? Um, as babies, Baby should be a perfect picture of the parasympathetic nervous system, right? Rest, digest, and grow. They eat, sleep, and poop. When there's tension in that nervous system, they get stuck in sympathetic. When you're stuck in sympathetic, you have a really hard time with the parasympathetic qualities. Okay, so one of my favorite quotes from Bruce Lipton, you cannot be in growth mode and protection mode at the same time. So this is the issue with newborns and why chiropractic can be so helpful. Little side note, big question we get, is chiropractic safe for babies? Yes, it is not the same thing as an adult chiropractic adjustment. Um, there's no popping, there's no quick sudden movements. It is very soft touch. It's about the pressure of testing a ripe avocado. And we're working on movements. We're working on decreasing the tension, opening up the body, 
Um, most babies actually love getting adjusted. Um, they'll fall asleep, they'll smile, they'll coo. Um, if they've been really irritable, their system, I mean, you can watch it. Babies are so adaptable. Um, that's one reason why I love working with them because you can just see the changes happen before your eyes. Um, and it's really, really cool. Our bodies are really cool and our babies are really cool and resilient. Um, so signs that you should get your baby checked by a chiropractor, um, colicky, digestive issues, throws up post-feeding, reflex, so not spit up, but like the projectile losing a lot of um, milk, any poor sleep, hates the car seat and is just kind of uncomfortable in their body, more irritable, uh, difficulty breastfeeding, latching, um, and difficulty turning head both both ways. So if they're favoring um, a breast, a certain breast of breastfeeding, or if you're bottle feeding and you tend to do just one side and they don't like the other side or they're uncomfortable, um, that would be a sign as well. So these symptoms, this list, list of symptoms that I have here, they look like normal baby things, right? We're told, oh, it's just you've got a colicky baby or not every baby sleeps well. My baby is just not a great sleeper. She just never liked the car seat. Um, I like to look at these as signs, right? Babies can't communicate with us with their mouth. So this is a way that their little bodies are communicating with us that their nervous systems are a little wound up. There's a little too much noise going on and they need some help. Okay, so that's where we can step in. Um, another big point with this, and I, I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole, but these are, like I said, they're signs that our nervous system is wound up. Oftentimes we're told in the medical world, they grow out of it, right? They'll, they'll, they'll sleep better later, or they will grow out of being colicky. Don't worry, it's just a season. Um, a lot of times... If we're looking at this as a sign, as the nervous system wound up, they're not growing out of it. These symptoms are growing into other things. These can be signs that their nervous system is struggling and later on could turn in other, into other situations, right? Uh, where we're not adapting, we're not growing, we're not meeting milestones, um, we're not able to integrate new learnings and um and all of that. And so, um, like I said, I, I don't want to focus on this too much, but we also need to be aware of this communication that our bot, uh, this communication, um, that our baby's bodies can be telling us because we want them to be able to thrive. We want them to be able to adapt. We want them to be able to do hard things and then also rest and digest. Um, so calming down that nervous system can really help us later on with not having to deal with, um, behavioral stuff and lack of focus and anxiety and all of those things that we see later on in, um, in our early childhood. So if you do notice any of these things, really try and get checked um, by a chiropractor or by someone who does body work with infants to help open up their systems and really regulate their nervous system um, so we can help them through. So um. Okay, this this little baby's Myra. Uh, so quick, um, just brief her story for a second. Uh, she was um, uncomfortable in her body. Her mom was like there. She's she's gassy, but she's getting her gas out. She's not constipated. Um, she just seems uncomfortable in her body, right? Every time we go in a car seat, she gets fussy and she sleeps, but she doesn't sleep well. She grunts and kind of tosses and turns. Um, and this is mama's baby, right? She just knows when something is off. Um, and so I think it was only after a few sessions where she was sleeping well, she was eating well. She, I remember her very first uh, driving home from our office, her mom called me and she was like, she's not crying in the car seat. And, um, I know that seems like a little thing to some people, but I'm sure most people watching this are moms and know that that can be a really big thing. Um, so that's pretty special to hear some, some stories like that. Here are some other littles in our office. Um, they're so sweet. I always tell people I have the best work views 
Um, and I really never get over it. These sweet little babies. So when I do see people, um, mama's through their pregnancy, I always do a complimentary um, first visit for babies uh, within the first uh, two, three weeks of their life, just so we can check out the nervous system, make sure um, there's no stress in there, and we can set them up for life and adaptability and growth as best as possible. Um, this is my practice. So if you are near Midway, um, I'm happy to see you and serve you. If not, like I said, you can hop on that website or just Google Webster certified chiropractors near me, um, and a list will pop up, but we are here in Midway right off main street. Um, you can reach out to us on Instagram at Midway Cairo or email me with questions um, or website midwaycairo.com and we have online booking. I know sometimes it's even hard to make a phone call when we've got work going on and family and kids and all the things. Um, so there is online booking, but if you choose to online book, like that's great. Um, but we also, I have, uh, this, this is our office number. Um, you can call or text questions anytime. Um, I may not answer if you call really late at night or really early in the morning, um, or if I'm with patients throughout the day. So texting may be a better mode of communication, um, or we can text and schedule a time to hop on the phone and answer any questions that you have. Um, so one of my biggest desires is to make this accessible for families, um, we've talked about the importance of it. I'm convicted of the importance of it. And I want our community to live life well and have great quality of life. And I think we live in such a special place, um, where people are just looking to be kind and love life and grow healthy families. Um, and it's really such a blessing to be in this area. And so we want to help you along the way. Um, even if you're not near me, call me, text me. And I'm happy to answer any questions or direct you in a way um, if I think something else or someone else is a better fit. So um, yeah, that is a wrap on this. And again, I just want to say thanks to Hi Family Co. Y'all are such, such a special community. Um, I didn't know about you guys the first year and a half I was here and then started hearing more women speak about you and the impact that y'all have made on their life and their family. Um, a lot of transplants live in the Park City, Midway, Heber area. And so um, everyone's kind of looking for family and community, it seems like. And um, y'all give mamas and families a place for that. So it's really special. And I'm grateful to have you close. Thank you so much. We feel the exact <laughs> same way. Thank you so much for all this helpful info tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for having me and giving me a chance to share. Um, yeah. And if y'all have any questions after the presentation tonight, then you just let me know. I'm happy to help however I can. Perfect. Thank you.